The state of the decks, we've got the Arcam, that's my CD player, that's my Sony mini disc, that's a Technics which is broken yet again, no matter how many times I get that repaired, it's always broken. We've got my old mate, the Iowa. Got one I've used before, but brought out of storage, never actually shown on this channel, it's a A&D, which is Akai, it's a GXZ6100 from Japan. For that mint, it's still got its original stickers on it in Japanese. Below it, wonderful deck, my Iowa ADWX909, which a lot of you might not know, the first deck is a good old fashioned auto reverse playback deck, but the second deck is a three header, yes. It's a twin deck with a three header. And then at the bottom, my Technics BX501, which is one of my favorite playback decks. It's modern, it's light, but it plays back superb. And I love it for that. But as we note, there's no Nakamichis anymore. There's no Revoxes, no. The expensive top end decks have gone. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback. So, it has been a while since I did a video, so I thought I'd bring you up to date with what's going on, if you care at all, and about the channel and cassettes in general. So, as you've seen at the start, all the Nakamichis have gone. The Revox went, the Dragon's gone, the CR7's gone, the ZX9 has gone. So why? Well, here's the thing. When I had the decks, they were appreciating assets because there was always the insurance policy of a little outfit in the UK known as Bowers and Wilkins. And whatever happened with these decks, if something went wrong, I knew I could send it to them. Yes, it would take a while for it to get there and be repaired. And yes, it would cost money, but I could always get them going because me personally, I don't have the time, I don't have the talent to maintain and repair expensive mechanical items like cassette decks. But when they shut down, the decks turned from being assets into liabilities, from something that was worth thousands of pounds to something that could potentially, because they all fail eventually, turn into hundreds of pounds sold as seen. So when the opportunity came that somebody wanted to buy them for a very fair market value, it seemed a no brainer to me. So I sold them. I mean, originally it goes back to the origins of the channel. The channel originally was started as sort of the marketing arm of my cassette comeback retail website. You know, in the days, oof, six years ago now, when I was getting regular emails, hi, I've got a garage full of cassettes. Hi, I've got a lockup with cassettes. Hi, I've got this collection of cassettes where they could be bought at relatively reasonable prices and sold at relatively reasonable prices. But those days are gone. The website has been down for a couple of years now. I haven't been retailing cassettes apart from the odd one or two on eBay. But other than that, you know, the, the sales had gone. But the channel started to promote that and to be taken seriously, you know, you sort of have to, you know, what they say, walk the walk. So I got these fabled Nakamichi decks, which everyone was talking about, in order to make cassettes sound as good as they could. And them decks certainly did. They were amazing decks. I don't think anyone can argue that they sounded fantastic. Yeah, oh, this is bad. Oh, they're overrated. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They made the humble cassette sound good. But as the website went, there was no revenue from it. And as I continued making videos, each video started to cost me money. I didn't mind when it was advertising revenue for a website. But now if we look at eBay prices for cassettes, I wouldn't pay that. I simply wouldn't. I haven't bought a cassette in years because I wouldn't pay that for them. And the sad fact is, is that although the name of the channel, Cassette Comeback, was sort of hopeful, the bottom line is cassettes aren't making a comeback. You know, RTM brought out the Fox and it's like, oh good, a decent brand new tape is being made. And what else came? We had the Splice It Capture. Yeah, that was decent. But then we had all of 
NAC's brand new tapes, which let's be honest, all turned out to be pretty unusable garbage. And then we had all the, oh, cassettes have sold more now than they did in X, Y, that, oh, cassette sales have doubled. But, but the bottom line is, apart from the RTM Fox Splicit Capture, what other notable cassette things have happened? Have we had any new decent decks? Some could argue that like these TIAC ones are new and decent. Yeah, but something which is comparable to vintage decks, classic vintage decks, well-engineered, fantastic sounded, feature-rich vintage decks. Have we had anything like that? No. Is there anything on the horizon? No. We've had lots of companies jump in on this trend, trying to sell trendy looking, advanced, but let's be honest, we all know that they're based on the same rip-off tarnishing mechanism and universally, they don't sound as good as a cheap brand name Walkman from the 90s. The cassette comeback just hasn't happened and it won't because let's be honest cassettes are about really two things one is nostalgia for the people who had them first time round and the other thing is a novelty for new people because they're trendy they're being seen on t-shirts mugs whatever they're trendy but as an audio format i'm afraid it is dead and it's not coming back yes we can enjoy it I still enjoy them. I haven't got rid of all my decks. I've still got my Arcam, still got my Iowa, I've got my Akai. You know, I, I've still got my decent decks. But the point is, as far as comeback and this being a usable channel, you know, a feasible way to generate some interest and generate some income, because these cassettes cost money every single time I open one, I'm throwing away money because they're selling for such an insane price on eBay, etc is this channel a viable proposition really other than for nostalgia and the answer is no if i could get the tapes cheap and dirt cheap then yeah but i've looked at most cassettes i've spent the money and most of the major cassettes i've looked at and we've got decent reviews with sound quality out there when there's nothing new coming there's nothing new to do videos on except recycle old things or like i say spend a fortune doing new videos using expensive new old stock cassettes and what can i say after doing this for so many years waiting patiently for new stuff to come it's not happened and i don't see it happening so i'm not saying that this is going to be the final video because it isn't but what i'm saying is those of you because you know where's the videos we want more videos are you okay yes i'm fine i mean i don't know if you can tell but i had a major changed this last year um you know uh, not not just uh, regarding cassettes at all i've embarked on a new lifestyle choice that has changed me in ways i couldn't possibly think about no i'm still a man before you start but basically um i've lost a lot of weight and i'm in the best shape of my life and it took me six months and it's mind-blowing i'm not going to come on here and spout about that there's lots of other channels but all i'll say is if you're interested go and see a doctor on youtube called dr anthony chafee or dr sean barker um you know it, it's called the carnivore diet and uh, I, i've lost five stone i've gone from a triple xl to an l you know i've gone from 46 inch waist down to a 36 inch waist i've never felt better physically i've never felt stronger and mentally because when i started this diet i was feeling a bit down because i uh, got made redundant and i was looking for another job and here i am six months later best form of my life and i have a fantastic job i'm a big car man you know look at all the hot wheels i'm working for one of my dream car companies and i'm loving the job and I'm loving how I am personally. So that's why, you know, I haven't got a lot of time for the nostalgia for tapes because I'm busy doing real stuff that's, you know, stuff for today with my children and in my job. But uh, yeah, if you want to check out them doctors, uh, Dr. Sean Baker, not Dr. Dr. Sean Barker, um, it, it worked for me. It's the single best thing I've ever done for myself. So yeah. So this is where I'm at. So if anything new comes in the world of cassettes you know rest assured i'm going to be there and there'll be a video on it but i just can't see what's coming down the pipeline i honestly can't and so maybe like they say it's better to die than to fade away i mean i look at youtube now 
and you know I've got very few subscribers and the main way to make money it seems on YouTube at the moment is to either be a narcissist and um, think that everybody wants to know about what you're doing in your amazing life you know duck lips etc or it's to take other people's content you know like music or videos or other people's uh, films or whatever and just be a commentator take other people's media and commentate on it maybe in a controversial way you know very little outlay and uh, you can generate a lot of money that way but stuff like this physical expensive products no there's, there's no future in that and like i say maybe it is narcissism that i did it for this long you know i loved saying to people i'm the number one youtuber in the world for cassettes but in reality you know it, it's not that awesome being number one in the world on something that no one really gives a shit about you know <laughs> just the way it is but i am thankful to all of you it's been a great journey i've really enjoyed it and i like to think that there's a bit of a legacy there for generations to come that you know oh i've just bought a load of max l xli's are they any good they can google it on youtube and there'll be a review of them so you know i'm not planning on taking the videos down let's leave them up there for future generations maybe but like i say unless something seismic happens or some really good stuff comes turns up i don't see how many more videos i can really eke out of cassettes and i don't want to diversify you know it's very easy to diversify and when i have done other videos on things which you know are not purely cassette focused the engagement isn't there and the views aren't there you come here for cassettes and that's it and while there's very few cassettes left to do there's very few videos left to make but let's not have it all on a down note because there is some cassettes in this video because i've been sent a couple of care packages so i reckon we should go and have a look and see what we got so continuing with the ultra professionalism of this channel um it turns out that i didn't have my microphone turned on when i did the unboxing so i'm going to give you a voiceover now and i'm going to try and remember best as i can what it is that i said but uh, yeah here we go so i got three packages uh two came from tony cruz of cassettecomeback.com and one came from Paul, who also supplied the cassettes for the uh, seven cassettes in seven days videos I did. So thank you very much, gentlemen. It's very much appreciated. At least some people support the channel, hint, hint. But there we go. So, um, yeah, that's the thing. You never know what you're going to get when you do these. So let's see how long I'm, I'm, I'm waffling on now, aren't I? Um, come on, get to the point, man. Open, open up the, the packages. Let's see what we've got. Right, this one was from Paul. So get Mr. Knife out, I think, and see if I can uh, do it without shredding all the wrappers. And yeah, that was a complete waste of time. Yeah, my knife skills are not the best. I would never make a huntsman. Uh, here we go. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. So we we've got the Woolies Chrome Tape. Now these were very common. Look at that. Three plus two. Yeah, for two ninety nine, so you could get five ninety minute Type Twos back in the day, early nineties. Have been for three pounds you, you you can't argue with that and i found the woolies tapes have always been very good they've usually been made by strand and strand have you know saw some good stuff out a lot of it from green court we've got the rax sds type 2 again a very competent turkish made type 2 i think i've i don't i actually haven't done a lot on rack so chances are i'll do a video on on that at some point um the good old max l xl2 can't go wrong with that you know great the last truly great max l tape i think a lot of people don't like them but i do and the fuji jp1s and 90 super ferret great looking cassette i have done a video on those so uh, keep checking through the past now this one's interesting a pyral optima four star xd i mean i did a pyral type 3 made in england uh, i did a pyral type 3 video quite a few years ago and it was an interesting tape and uh, i haven't had a lot of pyro so i'll probably have a look at that one as well ah memorex cdx2 this is one of those rare birds the metal tape for type 2 bias you know like the denon hd8 and the tdkhxs yeah 
these will have been SKC made. Uh, that's a yeah, that's a superb cassette. So that's from Paul. Thank you very very much, Paul. Much appreciated. Now let's have a look what we've got from Tony Cruz over at Cassette Comeback Canada. Right, we've got the Fuji DR. Like I say, these are um, the entry level Fuji from the mid eighties. Very attractive looking cassette. Um, you know, it's it's a very stereotypical looking cassette is the uh, Fuji GR, but always competent. Never met a bad Fuji tape. Panasonic, very rare Panasonic. These were, I think, TDK. Uh, I think they were Japan market only. Gold Star HD 60. Gold Star cassettes have always been good. And it's strange because Gold Star is now LG, a big respected giant in technology. But back in the day, Gold Star was thought of as being, you know, Korean made cheap rubbish. But. Um, the cassettes have always been very good from the ones that I've used. Uh, TDK DSX90. These are a bit special. It says best for high speed dubbing. They didn't know quite what to do with these or how to market them. You know, it's just above a D. But from what I know, the DSX is TDK AR tape in a D shell. That's a bit good. So what is oh, oh an Agfa stereo chrome. Now, chances are old 70s chrome that'll be pure chrome that's going to be a tough one to calibrate and get a good sound out of nowadays too cool to never seen these it's a type 2 obviously from the from the start of the packing in its late 90s early noughties never come across these made in china well assembled in china let's see where the tape comes from but uh that's interesting yeah never seen those before what else do we have bsf ferro extra one yeah that's uh I can tell that's a Saihan just by the, the distinctive shell markings. A common but very good cassette. What else did we get? Oh, I'm having a good rummage now. Oh, Realistic Super Tape Gold. Now again, not one that I bought many of at the time. Only sold in Tandy over here or Radio Shack in America. Um, doesn't come shrink wrapped. It's just got a little, little thing on it uh, to keep it closed. I could say that's an old cassette, but one that I think a lot of people have probably got a lot of memories of. Did we get anything else? No, no, we didn't. Right, that's it. Oh, oh no, hang on, here's another one from Tony Cruz. Ah, yes, it's a bit of a smuggler's board here. What else did he give us? Let's have a look. Oh, Merry Christmas. Yes, oh, all right, these are Christmas presents to me. I might not open these if they're very good. And we got, what do we get? We got another two cool two. So one for the collection. So that means one's going to be opened. The classic Maxo UD2 CD. One of the late ones. American version. Like I say, I, I never met a Maxo I didn't like. And those are no exception to that. Uh, the Sony CD2. You know, the one that, that melts, melts tape heads. But it's never melted any of my tape heads. Great value. Maybe someone just wanted to get them cheap, so they're bashing them. The last of the line UX. Again, never met a UX that I didn't like. Oh, the Denon HD8. One of the greats. I prefer the earlier shells, I've got to be honest. But tape-wise, yeah. Denon, never met a bad Denon. And that's a superb. Another Type 2 Metal. Now, I don't have any TIAC tapes. This is the only TIAC tape I have. TIAC HDX. 90 minutes type 2 i'm not opening that i'm keeping that in the collection sorry and all that love the shell on that one i think that shell's been used by a few different uh, brands but uh yeah i think i had some Hanimex, was it that that was in that oh basf type 3 i didn't have a good uh, time with the type 3 basf in that video i did if you want to check the archives didn't have a good time with that at all but it says usa made maybe assembled but uh, I don't think that's one I'm going to be running through the decks. Even though it's cracked, never know. Let's see how the feeling takes me. Is that it? Did I have any more from Tony? I think that's a lot. So uh, let's move on now to the bit where I did actually record the live audio. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, I like the Memorex CDX. It's, uh, that's probably the star for me. So, right. So that's the thing with... Um Getting unboxing videos, you never know what you're going to get, and you've got to uh, got to think on the fly. 
you know, I'll have that Forrest Gump, life's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Well, no, every box of chocolates I've ever bought usually has on the inside of the lid exactly what the chocolates are and a little card that tells you. But uh, anyway, so having a think, let's, let, let's, let's make a few videos, you know, it's, it's nearly Christmas, let's roll some out. So what I'm going to do is, I think in this video, we're going to look at some basic stuff. So we're going to look at this... Fuji DR because I don't think I've done a video on this actual cassette and the thing is you know uh, these are available a lot cheaper than brand new manufactured stuff like you know the uh, RTM Fox if you look around these these are very reasonably priced so let's see how good these actually do sound so let's take that one let's take another type one the uh, Realistic super tape. I'm all, I always like doing the realistic stuff because, well, you know, I, I haven't seen a lot of them. So we'll do that one as well. Um, I also think we should have a look at the DSX because, again, th this this was sold as just marginally more expensive than a regular D. And if you're new to the channel and cassettes, you'll listen to how good budget type ones can sound i think for this and then why not just uh, not that one sorry let's just throw in the good old basf ferro extra one just as a recap because again this is a cassette that is quite commonly available this is a cyan version just uh yeah some some nice type ones to show that if you look round you can still get good type one cassettes for reasonable price and how good they can really sound so i think yeah let's start off with these four so let's get to the unwrapping i guess so we'll start with the good old fuji dr now again this is this was fuji's uh entry-level cassette let's have a see what it says on the back full lifetime warranty good for everyday music and voice recording with any cassette recorder so okay a lifetime warranty Mm, won't work now but uh yeah not a lot not a lot of, to say there really but it's nice packaging oh we're big crack on the back never mind but fuji did make whoa this is yeah there we go fuji did make their own cassettes you know fuji oem for a lot of people as well for example, you know, the uh, much-loved Pioneer cassettes, a lot of them with Fuji, and they're very expensive. So let's wind the old tape on. Oh, that's very smooth, very smooth. So it's just your usual brownish cassette. It's not a super ferret, but it's a nice screwed shell. In fact, I, I think I've, I've had some cassettes which were, which were Schneider labelled, which... Look like this sort of shell but it's nice five screw shell you know and now i mean let's be honest this is a sort of uh cassette that looks like a stereotypical cassette that you would find on you know novelty products in fact that that bag picture that i showed earlier looks a bit like one of these doesn't it so let's see what comes inside it right well there's no stickers because it's got a paper label already on it there we go and what what does it say about this handling precautions yeah clean your heads don't touch it snap off your tabs but other than that it's a pretty generically basic card so there we go that's the fuji let's have a look at the bsf ferro extra now again commonly available this one but it's a good cassette well it normally is anyway um oh yeah let's look at the back first uh -huh. ferro extra so three stars for everything it's just very very average heat resistant up to 85 degrees celsius okay uh like i said this one definitely looks like saihan yeah we've seen this shell this is you know if you start looking late in the life you see this shell a lot um, with the A and the B in the corner, small sticker window in the middle and the Saihan hubs. But other than that, yeah, these are very, very nice shells to be honest. And Saihan again, Korean, the other big one after uh, SKC in Korea. And I've never had a bad one to be honest. This looks very nicely calendared. 
this should be a decent performer all round and of course it's BASF and there's no sign of MTech there but just a plain old J card and it is a slim case this one Yeah, very normal labels. It does look quite attractive. I'm going to take one off. I do like how these Saihan shells look because I know it says BSF Ferro Extra there, but they're just, uh, these are very th stiff shells. Uh -huh. But, uh, oh yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't quite look as good as I thought it would. But yeah, with the label in the middle, they look pretty good. now the realistic super tape like i say these i don't think because of this little thing here these rubber shrink wrap this is just how they come so oh yeah made in the usa distributed in canada ultimate dynamic range recording tape quite old these ones i mean if you look at i mean no disrespect to them but if you know you look at this shell yes it's screwed it is a made in the USA shell as well, um, but they do look a bit type zero, but let's see how easy they wind, if it winds. Oh no, ah, right, ah, I think that was a little problem with my winder there, haha. <laughs> let's try that again. Oh, this this feels a bit stiff, this does, well hey. Oh yeah, this, 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 this is, yeah. It looks a bit stiff and the old tape is creasing. Mmm. Mmm. Not too, uh, not, not looking too good. I think I might have to fast forward and rewind this one a couple of times beforehand just to free it up, I think. And this one, the DSX, which wasn't sold in Europe. Like I say, um, I'm trying to think of what the European equivalent is of the DSX. Um, people are screaming now, you put it in the comments. I, it's not an AD because I did the AD in the, in there. It's like, almost like this is AR tape, but in a D shell, if that makes any sense. But let's see what it says on the back. It just says, excellent for high speed dubbing, recommended for boom box systems and headphone stereos and reliable high precision. Because like I say, it's just D and DSX. But like I say, they did do the AD. Um, but I, I, I have a feeling this is AR, from what I can remember on the spot. AR in a D shell. And AR was pretty much one of the best ferrics out there. Super ferric. And um, therefore that makes it one of the best tapes. Because you know me, I love my ferric. So let's have a look of the tape and this i'm expecting it to be nice and black because it'll be cobalt doped let's have a look yes that's that's a nice shiny dark tape but other than that it's in a it's in a d shell you see just the, just the little bits of black and gold it just makes it look a bit classier and that's quite a an in-depth J card that one if you want to really uh, go for it with long titles but yeah so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, use a recorder that you haven't seen me use for quite a while now because I don't have the knacks anymore so we're going to have a bit of variety I'm going to use a different recorder today obviously uh, but I'm going to see if I can run this super tape a couple of times see if I can free it up first and we'll get some recording done. Okay, so I'm going to use my old mate, my Iowa ADS950 here. A deck that even when I had my high-end decks was never a deck I contemplated selling. Because not only does it sound superb, but it's one that I actually managed to rebelt and calibrate myself. Because I bought it broken all them years ago. And I managed to bring it back to life. And I think it's a deck that I could keep going for as long as possible so that's that's why it's here and it does sound great and you can't really see it in the thing there can you see if you haven't seen it before this is a three head dual capstan deck uh, it's a late one but uh, that, that's not a bad thing at all so yeah let's start working our way through these cassettes so what should we start off with Let, let's start off simple let's just take the good old BASF Ferro Extra like I say I love the shells on these 
like I say, this is a side hand, so I'll let me just calibrate this up quickly. Do, 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 do. So let's just check, Mr. All right, so uh, got all these the calibration level and the uh, record sensitivity low. So I think the bias is all right, just need to turn the record sensitivity up a bit. There we go. Just give it a little bit of bias. Yeah, I think we're about there. Let's take a little bit more bias off. Yeah, super duper. Right, okay, so I'm going to be using a uh, tune from the YouTube audio library for this. Uh, it's from a, a group that have got a lot of stuff coming out lately that's great called Track Tribe. And this one, I had to play it because it's called, haha, <laughs> Drop the Tapes. <laughs> Don't know whether that's uh, sort of segue into what I was saying earlier, but uh, I'm going to record this maybe peaking around four... That's what I usually do for a regular good old fashioned ferric. So let's have a listen and see how it sounds. Well, there we go. This is a common basic type one that even in this day and age is still gettable at a reasonable price, especially if you go to cassettecomeback.com where I'm sure you have these in stock. But let's be honest, that sounded superb. I was listening there, couldn't really tell much difference at all between source and the actual um, tape itself. Saihan, nice sturdy screw shell, nice shiny tape. Like I say, never met, never, not just never met a Saihan, never met a Korean based made tape that didn't sound good. Yeah, that's, what, what more do you want? Is, is paying 20 times more for a metal gonna make it sound that much 20 times better? I don't think so. So, on that note, let's just, uh, go back to drop the tapes again and start it up again the realistic super tape gold now when i just opened this before i said it was uh it was hard to wind um i've run it through a couple of times in the uh, cassette deck loosened it up a bit it seems to be all right now but this is an old tape let's see how this performs let's just reset all the calibration stuff again and let's calibrate this one up and see how this is. Okay, so we need to remove quite a bit of bias on this one. Oh, sorry, no, that's not working. Right, let's add some bias. Oh, we're going up, we're going up, right. 
that's the rec sensitivity duh sorry right let's try again there we go remove the bias add the rec sensitivity and what do you know it has calibrated up so it's not the type zero i thought it might be so let's try the old drop the tape again So, yeah, I could tell the, the left channel on that one seemed down and the top end had roll off. But what do you want? This is a 40 year old cassette. I mean, you know, again, I've said it before, I've got 40 month old SD cards which are dead as dodos. 40 year old tape, yeah, it doesn't sound the ultimate infidelity. But what do you want? It's not a Type Zero. But the thing is, it is such a nice looking, you know, it just it just looks nice. It's a nice little thing to have and that it can actually reproduce music with any sort of fidelity at all is a good thing. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second because I've realised wearing a grey top is terrible for reflections. So bear with me, I'm just going to try and do something with the lights. There we go, the production quality here sees no bounds i'm not going to reshoot it all because of bad light no we're just going to turn the lights down and keep on going ahem right so let's have a look at the next tape the classic fuji dr like i say entry level bought in packs of you know 10 near checkouts in supermarkets back in the day how does this cassette sound nowadays well let's find out let's reset the old bias in again uh one second oh. right let's get the calibration doing okay so let's crank up the level Okay, give it a little bit of negative. Oh, all right. I uh, I think we're there. Just a little bit of. Uh... All right, cool. So, uh, should we try something new? Should we... no? Let's 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 keep it consistent, shall we? Let's try the old uh, drop the tapes again. Apart from. Ah ha ha ha! It looks like my old CD player 
is messing me around. So one second, let me just reboot my CD player. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm streaming it from an MP3 key pl plugged into it. Hang on. Smoother. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, modern CD player with inputs and all that. Yeah, and you have to switch it off and on because it gets confused. Cassettes, don't get confused. You put it in, you press play, it plays. That's it. You, you can't beat technology like that. Anyway, <laughs> let's start listening to Track Tribes drop the tapes again. Entry level, unassuming, nearly 40 years old. Honestly, if, if I weren't pressing the button with the little source and tape switch changing and the little blips in the audio, if you just shut your eyes, would you know that that was a cassette? That is superb. And that's the thing again. I'll say it again. A lot of people are in this for the nostalgia and they want to buy what they had when they were young and you know get that feeling again of you know being in the shop going oh why i'm buying these blanks and feeling like you did then that's great but again if you're just coming into cassettes or if you've been in there for a while the smart money is buying a good deck because a good deck can make cassettes like this that are reasonably priced and easy to find ish it can make them sound that good. A bad deck cannot make the most expensive metal sound good. A good deck can make the most unassuming entry-level ferric sound good. And that sounded great. That was really good. And we've saved the best for last because, like I say, we know these. Now, I've been recording these, like I say, at four, but it's actually been peaking at six. But the TDK DSX, which as far as I'm aware, is AR tape super ferric in a D shell. This we're going to crank a bit. Let's see if we can run this at plus eight. You know, metal territory. Let's get it calibrated again. Whoa, hang on. Oh, look at that. I reset these right to dead center. I forget what I calibrated this to. I don't think I calibrated... I, ca I calibrated this to AD, not AR. I believe, yeah, from what I remember. But like that, I didn't need to do really anything there. These are almost dead centre. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to... I'm going to put them back at dead centre. Because that's, that's about the right calibration. So, let's uh, listen to drop the tapes again. But while I'm recording this, I'm going to crank it up a bit. Let's see how far we can push this. 
and we can really hear how good a good super ferric type one is and how those that poo poo type ones have never used a good one in a good deck. You know something, you'd think it would just be easy to change a track on a CD player, wouldn't you? But I'm not that good. So let's try again. In this day and age, I'd take a superferric over a metal. Now I know that superferrics themselves aren't cheap. You want to go out and get yourself ARs, ARXs, HFEXs, FRISs. They cost a lot, but they don't cost as much as a metal. What extra is metal giving you, really? This is running at eight, plus eight. Sounds superb. And this will cost you considerably less money than a metal and the beauty again if you knew is that if you record the cassette well in the first place then it will play back equally good in any decent well calibrated deck you know you can the the, the money is in buying a good recording that that's what makes a difference between a good deck and a great deck the great decks record superbly you know they they build the house superbly playing it back you can live in it afterwards because it's been well built if you know what i mean so a well recorded cassette will play back well in a good deck that's well calibrated it's getting the recording done properly in the first place that's the important bit so this you can put into any walkman even just some cheap new ones and it will sound good and super Ferrix, well, those into cassettes know how good they are, but just because something says type one on it, don't dismiss it as being cheap crap because they're not. They're some of the best tapes ever. And as I've said before, type ones are the most cassette sounding cassettes of all of them. The truth. was your favorite well sonically 
I think the DSX was the uh, best, obviously. Going to plus eight, sounded superb. Really hard to distinguish between source and the tape. That's the best sounding, definitely. My favorite is this one though. Cause I don't know, it sounded brilliant. It's so retro looking, but there's some comfort in knowing that something solo end, relatively easy to find, can perform so well. You know, it's like liking an MX-5 Miata over a Ferrari because it gives you the same kind of thrills, but it does it at a much more reasonable price. Eh, maybe that's a bad analogy. The Ferro Extra, again, rock solid, easy to find. And like I say, you again, we monitor this, you know, we listen to the source, we listen to the recording on the cassette, and we can instantly make judgment and we can hear the differences. But when you're not doing that, once this has been recorded, you can't make that comparison and it will either sound good or it won't sound good. And this sounds good. Again, the old super tape, you've got to give it some leeway. It, it's, it's not been shrink wrapped because these weren't shrink wrapped. It's at least 40 years old, but it still made something that sounded like music. It still sounded well. It did not sound like a type zero. And if you knew again, type zero is a slang name given to cassettes that are so bad, they're not even type one quality. You know, the kind of stuff you'd buy on market stalls in plastic bags in packs of three, and they were just about good enough for recording Commodore 64 games on, and that's it. But I guess what we're trying to say here is that there are still some quality cassettes out there. If your deck is good enough and you can calibrate to them, go and get yourself some of these while they're still relatively available, while they're still relatively cheap. Because, you know, 40 years old, they're going to last. They're going to last longer than your MP3 player or your phone. Or, you know, when you have to have 24 different subscriptions to streaming services to get the music you like because you got rid of all your CDs and your records. Duh! Get yourself some of these now if you want to stock up on them. And what do you know? Record the stuff you like off the streaming services and they're still going to be playable in the future even after your streaming service subscription is gone. And if you're looking for any of these and you're in North America, don't forget to go to cassettecomeback.com. Thanks again to Tony for sending me these to have a look and a play with. He's got them all in stock. Best prices everywhere. And he's a lovely guy. He'll look after you unlike anonymous eBay gouges or people that have warehouse full of tape that are putting the prices up and up and up through their greeds. No names mentioned there. But there we go. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do you another one shortly because uh, we've got a lot more cassettes to go through. But until then, happy taping. Bye-bye.